Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the 2022 Chevy Trail Boss ZR2. In the first part of this video, we're gonna talk about what the specifications are on the new Trail Boss ZR2, and then we're going to get into why this truck actually matters and whether or not you should purchase one. With all that being said, let's get straight into the video. So for me to properly describe the ZR2, I have to first talk about the original Trail Boss. So the original Trail Boss package was built off of a Silverado 1500. What they did is they added a two inch lift to the front end, more aggressive off-road tires compared to stock. So they put 33s on an 18 inch wheel and then they added Rancho Monotube shocks to the truck as well. And then on top of that, they added Chevy's trick system with the rear end where it automatically locks the rear differential when it feels like the truck is slipping out, which you guys know I'm not a huge fan of that. I'd rather just have an axle lock button than Chevy's system, but you know what? It is what it is. Anyways, aside from that, let's actually talk about what the ZR2 package is and kind of how it goes above and beyond the regular Trail Boss. So first off, it sounds like they might actually put 35s on this ZR2, so a little bit bigger, meatier tire, just like what you get on a TRX or a Raptor. And then on top of that, it sounds like the 6.2 liter V8 will be standard equipment. So right now with a Trail Boss, the 5.3 is standard, and then the 6.2 is optional, but it sounds like the 6.2 will just be the standard engine, and then that is paired to the 10 speed automatic transmission. And then on top of that, it looks like they're changing the front bumper styling. So with the Raptor and the T-Rex, you can like very clearly see the skid plate on the front end. And it looks like with the ZR2, they're gonna do something similar to that to give it that cool off-roader type look. The current Trail Boss just kind of has a regular Silverado front bumper. So this would kind of be quite a bit of a departure. And then aside from that, it looks like it is lifted even higher compared to a Trail Boss. So again, we've got that two inch lift in the front with the Trail Boss. This again, sits even higher than that. And so it'll be interesting to see how big they go. If it's just, you know, three inches instead of two or four inches or whatever, whatever they end up going for. Now, the most important thing to me personally, and the thing that we don't have information on is the rear shocks. And it looks like they pretty much have that whole area covered up to like purposefully not let us know. Now, here's the deal. Again, with the current Trail Boss, it has the Rancho Monotube shocks, which are great for the entry level off-road truck segment. You guys know that I used to own a Rebel and I took that off-road a little bit. And then I did get a Titan Pro 4X from Nissan for a week and I took that off-road as well. And again, those Monotube shocks shocks do a good job for an entry level off-road truck. But it sounds like the ZR2 is gonna be just a step above that. And so they should probably put a more advanced system. But again, we don't have any information. So they might just continue to use those Rancho Monotube shocks or they might do something different. Now, I don't think they're gonna go as far as doing a full live valve system like what the Raptor has or the active suspension that what the TRX has. But what they could do since they're using the ZR2 name is they could reach out to Multimatic and have them build a system for the Trail Boss just like what they had them build for the Colorado ZR2. The Colorado ZR2 has the Multimatic DSS V system, and you guys know I'm a huge fan of that system, even though I haven't had a chance to take a Colorado ZR2 off-road yet. Driving that truck on road, I just love the absorption you get with those shocks. I love the feeling of them. And so if they built a system for the Trail Boss and put that on the ZR2 package, I think that would make a lot of sense. And I think that would be really cool. And it would kind of bridge the gap between a trail, you know, kind of like an entry level uh, off-road package with a truck like the Trail Boss and something like the Raptor or the T-Rex. But those are the basic specifications. And then the other thing, if you guys are wondering interior wise and all that, it sounds like it'll get all the same updates as the rest of the Silverado lineup. So the newer dash, infotainment system, digital gauge cluster, all that kind of stuff. It sounds like it's going to get that whole same overhaul and then also the different aesthetics they're doing on the front grill and all that. Uh, but that's the basic information we have so far on this Silverado. Now let's get into why this Chevy Trail Boss is so important. The reason this is so important is it could potentially bridge the gap between an entry level off-road truck and the high performance off-road truck. So think the entry level truck segment as stuff like the Tundra TRD Pro, the Ram Rebel, the Chevy Trail Boss, and then the crazy high performance is the Ram T-Rex and the Ford Raptor. There's really nothing in between. This could be the in-between if Chevy does it right. So it looks like they're on the right track because it looks like it'll have 35s, so it'll have bigger tires than what you get in an entry-level off-road truck. It looks like it's gonna have a bigger lift compared to the current Trail Boss, so it'll have more ground clearance, a little bit more capability than an entry-level off-road truck. It's gonna come with a really solid powertrain as standard which again is gonna put it kind of above in the segment. Well, it'll actually put it 
out of the segment, right? That's the whole point of this. Uh, but the one thing they need to make sure of is that this has shocks that are different from entry-level off-road trucks. And if they mess up on that, then it really is just going to keep it in that segment. It's not really going to differentiate itself so much. So again, they use the Rancho monotube shocks and pretty much every single truck in that segment uses monotube shocks. And so they need to make sure this has a system that is a little bit more advanced than those trucks. But obviously, they can't make it as advanced as the Raptor or the T-Rex or it's going to be a direct competitor because it's going to be as expensive, right? Those systems are not cheap whatsoever. I mean, just go look at like race series shocks from Fox and you will uh, probably cry because of the price. But all of that aside, that's pretty much what they need to do. And it sounds like they're on the right track because they've got the bigger tires in the pictures that we can see. It looks like it's higher up off the ground. It looks like it has cooler styling with the skid plates. We just don't have a whole lot of information on the suspension and the shocks. And so hopefully they do it. And again, my recommendation was they could just work with Multimatic again and make a system similar to what they have on the Colorado ZR2 and if they do that and put that in the Trail Boss then this would be a nice in-between truck and then obviously they have to make sure that the price point is in the right place as well so right now if you get a fully loaded entry-level off-road truck you're in the low $60,000 range roughly and the starting price of a Raptor is about 65 dollars now and then the TRX is about $70,000 those trucks fully loaded are about $85,000 for the Raptor and then about $95,000 for the TRX. So we do have kind of like a definitive price range that this truck could be within. Here's where I think that they need to put it. Obviously, right there, it's gonna have to be more expensive because it has bigger tires. Those cost a little bit more. And well, it's got the ZR2 name, so they can uh, basically charge a little bit more just because of the name and all that kind of stuff. It, I mean, it's just what car makers do. And then on top of that, if they do upgrade the lift and then the shocks, like what it looks like they'll do, that's gonna cost a little bit more money. So it makes sense, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but I would have to say, I don't think it should be more than like 70 to maybe mid 70s fully loaded, but I think mid 70s would still even be pushing it. And so I think realistically, it should start maybe in like the low 60s without any options and then maybe fully loaded with all the options maybe $70,000. And so then it would actually be a really solid truck to go for. And on top of that, because of the price point, uh, it would actually pull some people to maybe look at it, right? That are looking at a TRX or a Raptor because then they'd be like, okay, well, Chevy obviously just updated the interior with this truck and has the new infotainment system, has a new digital gauge cluster. So it looks really cool. I could either get this fully loaded off-road truck or I could get this base model truck that yes, has better shocks and suspension, more capability, but the interior is gonna be a lot more basic compared to that truck. And so then it could actually pull buyers from the Raptor and the T-Rex, even though it won't technically be a direct competitor. So as long as Chevy does that right with the price point and then does add a different, more advanced suspension system and shock system than what the current Trail Boss has, then I think it'll be really cool and it'll actually change things in the truck segment. And then maybe we'll see more trucks that are kind of in this in-between area. Now let's wrap things up by going over whether or not you should actually look into purchasing the Chevy Trail Boss ZR2. So the short answer is just maybe. The reason I say maybe is it really just depends on what the finished product ends up being. If it's just a bigger Trail Boss, right? It just has bigger tires and a bigger lift and a skid plate. I don't think it's worth it because you can get all that stuff aftermarket for significantly less expensive than what this package will most likely cost. And you can just do that to a regular Trail Boss. And yeah, I think that would be the route to go. But if they actually add a more advanced system of shocks with this truck so that it is in its own like new segment that it's creating, then I think it'll definitely be worth it because the resale value will for sure be there and you're actually getting tons of value for what you're buying. And on top of that, it'll all be covered under factory warranty. And so if Chevy does what I'm saying they should do, then I think it'll be worth it. But if they don't upgrade the shocks and they just do the lift and all that kind of stuff, I, I don't really think it's worth it. I would just get a Trail Boss with a 6.2 V8 and then just do aftermarket bumpers, throw 35s on it, and then just do an aftermarket lift if you don't feel like it's tall enough already. And so yeah, that's pretty much my answer on that. But that is going to sum things up for our video on the Chevy Trail Boss ZR2. As always, if you're stopping for the first time, please subscribe, comment down below what you think, and then if you do feel like my videos are of value to you, I'm gonna include a link to my Patreon in the description down below. I really appreciate your support over there, and yeah, I'll see you guys.